Video, it's an awesome part of a content marketing plan. Analytics, great way to make decisions and iterate to get better results forever after. How do you combine these? If you're doing video as part of your content marketing, how do you measure its performance? A piece of content that has an embedded video? Better, worse, the same? Is it worth the investment? In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Google Analytics 4, GA4, to measure the performance of embedded YouTube videos from your content marketing program uh, to see the actual impact uh, and the return on that big investment. Let's jump in. I'm going to first show you how, by default, GA4, unlike Universal Analytics, is actually going to help you track video views and engagement on videos, uh, especially when those videos are embedded from YouTube. So I'm just going to start by going into the settings. I'm going to click on data streams. I'm going to click on the uh, web stream details. And over here on this gear, when I click this gear, I'm going, it's going to show me the enhanced measurement settings. I'll zoom in a bit for you. And you can see that uh, video engagement is turned on by default. So what this is going to do is to start tracking video engagement related events uh, such as video starts and duration and uh, several other events related to videos. Um, so this should work automatically. Now if you read the, the uh, JavaScript API support, it's going to suggest that you need to do something in here called uh, enable JS API and make that equal to one. In my experience, it's going to work just fine without that. It doesn't even need that. Uh, go to the video that you want to embed, click on share, click on embed. It's going to give you this code. Put that code on your website. That's exactly how we do it and that's working well. It's actually tracking accurately uh, in, in Google Analytics 4. Now let's confirm that it's tracking. Here's a, here's a page. Scroll down, there's the video. I'm going to right click and check how that video is embedded. View page source, control F, iframe iframe title equals YouTube video player. Look, super simple. That's the whole thing. That's, that's, uh, that's the iframe code. Uh, so nothing fancy there at all. Uh, I'm going to find this page in GA4. Copy and paste the URL. Come in here, go to engagement, pages and screens. I'm going to switch the dimension of this from, uh, to page path and screen class. Then I'm going to add a filter to find that specific URL. And now I'm just looking at the performance of that one URL in GA4. If I scroll over here, I can see event count. And this will show you all the events that were triggered on that URL. I'll come down here to the Vs. You can see video complete, video process, progress, video start. Click on video start. And there you can see the total number of times that that video play button was pressed. There it is. No setup required. It does it for you. This is one of the many ways in which GA4 is actually better than UA. I know that's a weird thing to say. I know a lot of people get very triggered by that kind of comment, but uh, it, this is nice. I used to have to, I did this before and I had to go into like a Google Tag Manager, no longer necessary. Okay, so what is the impact of these videos? Uh, it's tracking, now what? How do you use that to actually make better decisions? Uh, do people who watch the video uh, take different actions? Are they more engaged? The, uh, do they spend more time? I'm going to measure all those things for you, but I can't easily do it here in the reports. So for this, I'm going to create an exploration. When I make explorations, I like to just start with a blank exploration. I'm going to come in here, and uh, this is going to be just a free form exploration. I'm going, to, I'm going to build it from scratch. Okay, the dimensions that I need for this are going to be the event name, because I'm going to be looking at um, video starts, and the URL, so I'm going to be looking at uh, page path. So click on dimensions and it's going to, you can search for many of them and I'm just going to search for the event name dimension, import that. And then I'm also going to find the path, the page path dimension. There it is. Page path screen class. We'll take both of those. Click, click import. Now they're both here. Great. Now we're going to add the metrics. What metrics do we want to use to measure the performance of these videos? Uh, I like engagement rate. Uh, bounce rate was always kind of a garbagey metric. Ga engagement rate is quite useful. Uh, I'm also going to just look at total traffic, which is sessions, and maybe the average engagement time. I want to see if you know watching videos actually affects how much time people spend on this page. So engagement rate and engagement time. Let's go search for those. Um, engagement rate, there it is. Average engagement time per session, there it is. And the other one, I was just going to choose the top level kind of session metric, there it is. So I've got three metrics, two dimensions and three metrics. 
Now the dimensions I'm going to put into my uh, rows. Let's just start with the page path. There it is. And for and next for the values, uh, I'm going to pull in all three of my metrics. So here are the values that we're going to set. We'll start. We'll put sessions at the top. I'm going to follow that with engagement rate right below it, and then we'll put average engagement time because that should be interesting. I want to see if people who watch videos spend more or less time. So I basically have all the URLs uh, on my site. I have all of the sessions. I get through. Now this has got a lot of stuff that is not my content marketing program. So I'm going to filter this just to see the blog to create a filter for that. Uh, I'm going to drag the page path into the filter and I'm going to filter just to show when the URL contains uh, the word blog. This is one of the many reasons why it's very convenient to have uh, all of your content marketing in a directory or maybe within a subdomain that have a, a common word. It makes the analytics easier. Look, now I'm only looking at my content program. Now, if all of your blog content is on a subdomain, such as blog.website.com, in that case, you would use host name as a dimension and drag that into the filter box and filter for the word blog as the host name. Uh, that should work just fine in analytics. Okay, but people who did and didn't watch videos, I actually need to see a segment for these two types of people. This is one of the examples of where you're in a, uh, I'm in a free form exploration and I want to add segments. Two segments, people who did watch video, people who didn't watch video. In terms of the definition uh, in analytics, that's gonna be where uh, the event name contained video start and where the uh, exclude where event name contained video start. So I'm gonna click on the little plus to create a segment. These are types of users, right? I'm looking for the, deep, the, the differences in users. You can create these for sessions or for uh, other things as well. Uh, this is it. I'm going to call this one uh, video watchers. And the filter for this, or the criteria for this is, is just going to be when the event contained video start. That's it. Now, even before I click to save and apply, I'm going to get some interesting information over here. This is going to show me the percentage of all users. That looks about right because we get quite a bit of traffic to the blog. Only 1% of visitors watch the video. Okay, so be it. Click Save and Apply. And I'm going to create a second segment for non-video watchers. So another plus, another user segment. I'm going to call it non-video watchers. And it's going to apply when the event uh, contains video start but not to include, I want to exclude. Oops, throw that, I'm actually gonna throw that away and click groups to exclude. Exclude when, when the event contains video start. Okay, that's it. This should be 99% of visitors, makes sense. Not surprised by that at all. Save and apply. So uh, literally this is going to create those two segments as two different columns here. And it's gonna short, sort of show me, pan out just a little bit, it's going to show me the difference in the metrics for those two audiences, those two types of users. Total sessions, the engagement rate, average engagement time per session for people who did not watch and people who did watch the videos. So uh, it actually is uh, not enough data here. That's only a month. Let's go back and get a little more data. Let's start from January 1st. I find this really interesting because uh, three of my last articles have embedded videos in them. So you can see this one's about how to start a LinkedIn newsletter, Google Analytics 4 versus Universal, uh, how to use AI to create marketing personas. And I want to see like that effort. Like these things take me about four plus hours to make. <laughs> Is that worth the time? So I need to see more rows to find those. I'm going to make this show maybe 50 rows. And if I wanted to, I could right click on any of these and kind of um, just show that one if I wanted to. And you, you can create filters by right-clicking on anything in the report to exclude that or just just to include that. So now let's jump into a bit of analysis. If I'm, I'm looking at row 24 here, this was the post about GA4. It had a video at the top. The video was kind of fun. It was like a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, now I'm just going to right-click and for a minute here it's going to create another filter for me so that I'm going to see just that one row. Very helpful. So now I can see that the uh, the total views on that were 2,800. 2,200 nobody watched. The, the number of people who did watch was 658. So if I divide 658 by 2865, I can actually see the view rate of that about 23% of people who landed on this page actually watched the video. That's pretty high engagement. 
Now I can see that the, the uh, people who didn't watch the video, 34% of them were engaged. Remember, an engaged session is a person who saw more than one page. They, they spent more than 10 seconds or they converted. So here I can see that just 34% of people uh, engage with the content at that level. Uh, the, the ones who did watch, wow, 48%. That is a 40% lift in engagement rate. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, other analysis that I noticed at, while doing this was that when the word video appeared in the headline, I had uh, many more of the visitors would actually watch the video. Um, although that seemed kind of surprising to me at first, it really does make sense because what is the intent of the visitor who clicks? Everything about page engagement aligns with the visitor intent. So the visitor who saw the word video in the headline or in the social post when they clicked and landed, they're much more likely to watch the video. So one of the takeaways and bits of analysis that I got from this was uh, discovering that uh, you'll have higher play rates on embedded YouTube videos and articles if the word video appears in the headline. Okay, now let's add uh, another tool for measurement. Uh, let's take a look at YouTube Studio and see how the GA4 stuff complements the data that we get about videos themselves within YouTube. If I come into YouTube Studio and I just want to measure the performance of that video, uh, I can see some very high level things here, subscribers and watch time. Uh, if I go into advanced mode, uh, it will give me things like the traffic source. Again, I've got to go back to my uh, long enough to a similar date range there. You can see when the piece went live. And external here shows anything wherever the video was embedded, including Google. <laughs> so uh, not that useful of a metric. This could mean a whole bunch of different things. But now when I combine that with my exploration, I can actually see the, the people who watched it on my site versus uh, people who watched it uh, elsewhere. That's important because if you created a search optimized video, it may actually get discovered right there within YouTube. So example, LinkedIn newsletter best practices. Uh, that video appears here. So Google search is an amazing way to help your videos get discovered uh, directly from YouTube. That's not going to show up in your Google Analytics because that's not a website visit. That person's going to YouTube. Uh, the other one there was AI marketing personas. Search for AI marketing personas. It's right there at the top. It's at the very top. So if I want to see uh, how many people watched it from my website versus how many people watched it from Google, the GA4 is the only way that you can do that. So an example of the decisions that you might make from this, maybe you've embedded a video that had a relatively low number of views but had a big impact on engagement. That video just needs to be promoted a little harder, a little longer, keep it in heavy social rotation. Or maybe you've got a video with like um, lots, of lots of views but uh, very low engagement. Okay, that's a video that's getting the clicks to get played. Maybe you did a good job on the custom thumbnail there, but the video is boring. Like it starts slow or it's not hitting it hard enough. So those are examples of how you can use this data to say, well, you know, is the engagement uh, in an expected range based on its views or is it's, are the views in an expected range based on the engagement? Hope that was helpful, fun, useful, uh, and now you have a, maybe a better sense for how to measure the impact and the ROI of all that time that you spent creating that super high quality, super high engaging format for content video uh, using Google Analytics 4. How to measure your video performance from your content program in GA4. If you found this useful, feel free to pass it along to anyone else who's struggling to do that same kind of analysis. And uh, if you like this, feel free to subscribe and we'll keep making them. Again, Andy from Orbit Media, see you next time.